thing, I guess, just to get started. Um, obviously, I know, Jake, you're a film composer and sound designer, but can you just give a little bit in your own words, just a little intro of who you are and what you do? Yeah, so um, I was originally a drummer and a pianist, and usually I, I just played music, and then I kind of started to get into, I went to Berkeley College of Music, um, and I kind of started to get into writing, and then I majored in film scoring and realized, like, that's definitely the most amazing thing you can do with music. Um, and I just loved combining, because I also love film. Like, I really, really love film, and I was just wanted to combine my music and, and film. And so I started to do that, um, you know, got a degree in it. And then since then, I've just been writing music for um, so far, just uh, film um, commercials and like a little bit of some podcasts, but mainly film and commercials. You know, I like film the most, but commercials pay the most. So, um, and then, and then I also got um, really into sound design and like post-production sound editing, which is like everything you hear in a film other than the music. So gotcha. like all the dialogue, all the ADR, all the Foley, if someone closes a car door, you know, I've got to put that into the film. It's usually not from the onset audio, it's all put in afterwards. Um, and then like other sound effects, like you create them, like the sound designer creates them for the movie, you know, almost none of it is recorded when they shot the movie, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really like that as well. And so that's what I've been doing just for film and some commercials. Um, and I guess, yeah, that's it. That's kind of what I do. And then like, I also do like a little bit of, you know, music supervision, like a lot of these smaller films, you just like the composer does like kind of everything music. And so if we need a song, I will do some like, you know, either outreach, depending on how big the budget is, you know, I, I might have to find some smaller artists and, you know, either license their song or, or um, figure out some kind of deal to use their song. Um, because I'm not much of a songwriter. I write like orchestral music and, and kind of or modern hybrid orchestral music. And I can't really like lyrics or, <laughs> you know, like I could write a song if I had to, but I'd rather leave that to like actual songwriters. So um, yeah, that's what I do. Gotcha. Um, and that's interesting. I don't, I didn't know that in terms of sound design that some like basically all the sound effects come in after. I didn't realize that that was how it worked. Oh yeah, <laughs> none of them. Cause think about on set, if someone does a little action on set, I mean, all you have is the boom mic, you know? And it's like the boom mic is only meant to pick up the dialogue. Mm. So if someone closes a car door um, and they're talking, that car door is not gonna sound that good yeah. when you're picking up the dialogue. And so you have to put all of that in afterwards or like gotcha. footsteps, you know, a boom mic is not going to pick up footsteps, but you have to put them in there. So it feels realistic. Yeah. It's tedious. <laughs> yeah, it's it sounds really like tedious. It. Yeah. But I love it. I like doing it. So. And does that ever working in sound design, does that ever kind of overlap with like the music that's in a film? Like how do you kind of negotiate those sounds together, I guess. Like if there's background music, but there's also, you know, a car door slamming or there's footsteps or those things are happening simultaneously. You have to like negotiate the different levels on those two things. Like how do they work together? Yeah, you have to, you, that's a good question. Cause you definitely, it's, they're not separate. You know, they're, all, they're both interconnected and you have to keep that in mind when you're doing either of them. Um, and that's why I like doing films where I've done a few films where I'm the composer and sound designer so I can, like really curate it so they both mm -hmm. perfectly fit together. Yeah, it's so intricate. I feel like when you're watching a movie or a TV show or something, you don't think about those intricacies of how all the sounds are working together yeah. and how all the different levels have been figured out. And yeah, it's that's so interesting. <laughs> you don't notice, but you do notice if it's taken out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. You don't notice because it's good. So that's yeah. why you don't notice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, it's and, fun, right? It's just a yeah. kind of wild thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. Um, and I, you kind of started to touch on this when you were when you were giving your intro. But I guess, like, how did you sort of end up where you are now? And was 
you said you kind of got into film composing in college. So were there other things that you were kind of considering thinking about doing and how did film composing end up being the route that you took? Um, like what, what, what kinds of ideas did you have maybe going into college about what you thought you were gonna be doing and then how did that translate to where you are now? Yeah. So um, I definitely, for a long time, I did not think I was gonna go into music at all. I kind of just applied to Berkeley on a fluke. You know, <laughs> I got into Boston University and I was certain that that was where I was gonna go. I wanted to study poli sci and go into government because um, I'm from DC and I really like that stuff. But then I was like, you know, I got into Berkeley, which I didn't expect. And I thought about it and I was like, why not? This kind of sounds <laughs> a lot more fun for me to do. It's probably more difficult, but probably more fun. Um, and then I got there and I just, you know, really fell in love with the film scoring program. And, and um, I thought about other stuff like production and, um, you know, maybe electronic music or just, um, you know, I definitely wanted to do something production wise, but I don't know. I felt pretty sure the whole time that I was gonna do film scoring. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, you know, got educated in it and figured out really how to succeed in it. And then moved out to LA a few months after I graduated. Gotcha. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like when you're working in the music, well, it's, it's interesting that you didn't even think when you're applying to college that you were gonna end up working in the music industry. No. And then even, even within the music industry, I feel like even people that are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna work in music, like, it's hard to know exactly what that means because that could mean so many different things. And even when you think you've decided what you're gonna do, people, a lot of people end up going in all these different directions just because of the opportunities that come up, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. And definitely, I feel like what most people, you know, either are educated in or decide what they're gonna do in the music industry, usually it turns out being something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not easy because there's not that many opportunities and it definitely certain areas of the music industry are a lot more difficult than others. Yeah, for um, sure. So you kind of got to figure out what's the best thing for you and what's going to make you money. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something to consider. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I guess my next question would be just what is what is your kind of creative process when you start working on music for a specific project? Because I know I could never be a film composer. <laughs> That's just mm -hmm. something I feel like my brain can't comprehend how all of that works and, and being able to think about all these different instruments and how all of these different sounds are going to come together to create, you know, the feeling that you're looking for for, for a scene or, or for a specific project. So I feel like your your brain has to work a certain kind of way to be able to do that kind of work. So what is your creative process when you are are given a come onto a project and you're gonna start working on a composition? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's not easy or anything. Um, <laughs> and it's a very, very long process, especially, you know, you think about like a big budget feature movie. Um, it's a long process uh, from start to finish. But I guess my creative process on, I mean, they're usually kind of smaller projects um, compared to like a big budget feature movie like Harry Potter or something. Um, but my process is just, you know, above all, I get the film. Um, you have something called a spotting session or I watch the film a bunch of times and then I meet with the director for what's called a spotting session. And that's where basically we just sit down and maybe a producer's there too. And we just sit down and we go through the whole movie meticulously. And I, he tells me, he or she tells me exactly what they're looking for music wise. And usually I don't ask for like music terms. Like I don't want instruments or anything. I want like emotion. Cause a lot of times maybe the director doesn't know anything about what instruments really are. Um, but not always, but so I go through that. I figure out exactly what the director wants and then I just sit down and start writing, really. Um, there's a long time of just brainstorming themes and ideas because the way most scores are structured is you have different themes, like short melodies for each narrative, narrative theme. Like maybe there's a love theme between two characters or there's 
um, a theme for the protagonist. Like think about Harry Potter. Um, you hear that Hogwarts theme, you know, I'm not going to do it here, but like the, dun, <laughs> dun, 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 you know, yeah. Um, and that's like, that puts you into Hogwarts right mm -hmm. away. I mean, it, right away, you feel like you're in Hogwarts. And yeah. so there's a bunch of those and then you create those and then you just start putting them together in a larger score as the narrative develops. Mm, um, that's and then, and then once it's all finished, you have to mix it and produce it like bigger budget films someone mixes and masters the music who's not the composer but for like me i have to produce it as well you know mix it and master it before it's finished got it yeah wow it's yeah so you kind of start with these smaller musical ideas for the different aspects and plot lines of whatever the project is and then those musical ideas start to get combined into what becomes the larger score for the project. Yeah. You definitely do it piecemeal, you know, because you yeah. can't just start and write all the way through. You have yeah. to really build. Yeah. Or else you can't wrap your head around it. Yeah. I, I, I feel like that definitely makes it a lot more manageable and like easy to understand because I, when you listen to a film score, you know, there's all these great film scores from, yeah, like Harry Potter and Star Wars and all of these films, and they just seem so grand. And like, there's all these moving pieces and all of these instruments. And it's hard to imagine one person or even a group of people like coming up with all of that and, and creating all of that from, from scratch, from start to mm -hmm. finish. But yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense, like starting with these smaller ideas and then those are what eventually becomes the larger score. Yeah. And I will say on those bigger movies like Harry Potter or Star Wars, those composers have like a team of assistants helping. <laughs> yeah. You know? But they yeah, still do the sense. writing. They definitely still do the actual writing. They just don't do all the tedious parts of scoring. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of like some of the projects that you've worked on or maybe things that you're working on or, or hope to work on, how do you um, connect with people and and kind of connect and network with people to get on these projects in the first place? Like how how have you met the people that you've worked with on, on their films in the past? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of like a, a myriad of ways. It's, especially in LA, so much of it is just networking. You have to become really good at networking. It's all about who you know, which I'm not very good at networking, <laughs> but I'm getting better at it. I'm always getting better at it, but it's not easy for sure. Yeah. Um, especially I'm kind of introverted. And so it's, it's difficult to like, just constantly be meeting people. But you know, you meet people in a lot of different ways. I mean, there are definitely events in LA, like, you know, kind of mixer type things where you can go and just meet other industry professionals. And then there are, um, you know, I just, I'm constantly trying to meet people through the people I already know. Um, I've gotten a few different films from just like grabbing coffee with friends of friends, you know, mm -hmm. like I hear that they're producing a film and I'm like, can I meet them? Um, and yeah, you kind of hear what people are doing. And if they're doing something that you want to be a part of, you say like, let's grab coffee or let's grab a drink, you know? Yeah, and, and speaking of networking, I feel like that's something, because the music industry, I mean, everybody will tell you, you know, it's all about networking. It's all about making connections. If you have to, you have to, you have to, no matter what part of the music industry you're working in mm -hmm. um, or the entertainment industry in general. Um, but I think a lot of people struggle with that, especially in the beginning when you're young and you're still kind of negotiating that. Um, so one of the tips that I've heard a lot is networking like laterally or horizontally, people say. So networking with the people who are kind of at the same level as you, um, like when you're in college, networking with your peers and the people who mm -hmm. are all around you and are kind of, yeah, at the same level as you in terms of learning about the music industry and figuring out what they want to do. Um, so when you were in college at Berkeley, obviously you were surrounded by lots of musical people. Um, so did you do a lot of that? Did you work on projects with, you know, your fellow students and, and did any of that kind of help you in terms of just connecting with those people when you were first starting out? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And I actually worked in the film scoring labs where everyone went to like work on their projects. So it was kind of like constant networking. 
yeah all the people who worked a lot which meant they were good at the projects <laughs> so um yeah so i did a lot of that in college and you know people would go out and hit the bars together and and especially like the film scoring I mean, people did meet people outside of the program, but the film scoring program specifically was very close. You know, it wasn't that big. So everyone knew each other mm -hmm. in the major and like everyone went out to get drinks together and everyone was super close as film scoring majors. Yeah. So that was really nice. And then now like most of us are out here in LA and I'm still, you know, hanging out with them as everyone's doing different stuff to build their career. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I feel like that's, it's nice to have those kind of connections or those like lifelines, especially when you're moving out to a place like LA. Mm -hmm. I feel like it probably can definitely feel big and overwhelming and, and lonely sometimes if you don't have people around you. So it's nice that you have those connections still. Yeah, and it was not an easy move in the middle, in the height of the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way to meet anyone new here. Um, so it was pretty amazing that I did have people who already, you know, I already knew from Berkeley because they also moved out here for the film industry, so. Yeah. I did want to ask you, you know, obviously I, I, I looked at some of your credits, things you've worked on so far, and you said there's some things that you're working on now. Are there any kind of dream projects that you have or just things that you would love to be a part of as a film composer, as a sound designer, anything really, even, even beyond that, doesn't have to be <laughs> in what you're uh -huh. doing now. Yeah, so dream projects. Um, I guess I would just love to work on, you know, really just any, even if I'm not writing for it, just any, you know, big budget feature drama. Um, like I love drama the most, just like really emotional films that can really resonate and um, affect you. And that was something you mentioned, you know, drama, emotional music. I know that was something that was in is in your bio about how like creating emotional, very deep emotional music. Yeah. Um, like, is that ever, ever difficult for you to do? Do you ever find it difficult to channel the emotion that you're looking for? Or does that just kind of come naturally when you're working on a project and, and you're creating music for it? Yeah. So I think it's not difficult for me to create emotional music. What's difficult is to create the right emotional music mm -hmm. for the film. You yeah. know, the difficult part is making sure it fits the narrative mm -hmm. um, and really perfectly highlights the emotion behind the scene and goes along with what the director's vision is. Yeah, yeah, and actually that's that leads into my next question, which is just about like, when you're working with, you know, a director or a filmmaker, obviously you know you're creating this music but you're trying to tell their story um so you really have to you know remember what it is that they want to hear and what the, the story that they're trying to tell and the emotions that they're trying to evoke um so like has there ever been a situation in which the director has wanted you to go in a direction differently than what you wanted or or wanted things to sound differently than what you thought and, and how did you kind of negotiate that? Oh yeah, for sure, <laughs> definitely. Um, and you kind of just got to keep trying it, you know? And a lot of times, um, sometimes like you'll write something and then the director will be like, no, I want it this different way. And then you write something else and the director is like, no, I wanted the original way. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, but I mean, that's just part of the job. You just um, you really got to interpret what he or she says and kind of figure out what they really want. Mm -hmm. And that's not super easy, but yeah. um, it's fun just trying to figure out what works really well. Yeah, because, yeah, you, you said earlier, you know, the people that you're working with aren't even necessarily musical. You know, they might mm -hmm. know they know what they want to feel, but they don't necessarily know how to achieve that. So it's not like they can really you know, tell you musically what they're looking for. You kind of have to do the detective work and, and figure that out yourself in order yeah. to achieve what it is they want you to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of like a skill in and of itself. Yeah. Being able to interpret what the director, producer wants in the film. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mm -hmm. would imagine that's probably one of the more difficult aspects of being a film composer. 
sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's really difficult. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, my kind of final question for you um, is just what advice would you have for maybe somebody that wants to do what you're doing, wants to get into film composing? Maybe they're in high school and trying to figure out what they want to study in college. Maybe they're, you know, in college, finishing up, trying to figure out what they want to do career-wise. Um, what would be your advice, any advice really, for someone that wants to be a film composer, wants to be a sound designer, wants to work somewhere in that bridge between film and music? How do you mm -hmm. kind of start to get into that space? And, and are there any, um, you know, things that you've experienced thus far that you wish you had known about sooner or mistakes you've made that you wish you had known, had heard about before or anything like that? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I'd say the most important thing probably if you're like a lot younger and considering getting into it, um, like, or even if you're in college, like just practice it all the time. I mean, write all the time and get clips from other movies or, um, or just write without the film. But if you can get clips from other movies um, and do it all the time, because the only way you're gonna get really good at it is if you write to film all the time. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only way. And so I'd say that, and if you can, you know, obviously you don't have to go to college, but if you can go to college and finish it, because there's so many things you're gonna learn there that you just will never, ever, ever learn on your own. Mm -hmm. um, obviously not everyone has the ability to go to college. And I'm if you can't go there, like I'm not saying don't go for it, you should still go for it. But yeah, just practice it all the time. And it's never too early to start networking and trying to meet people in the industry. Um, yeah, I'd say just try to start networking and reaching out to people and just do projects with other people, even if they're not not a big project or it's kind of not a very good project. Just practice working with other filmmakers or um, other, yeah, just other p filmmakers. Work on work on that so you really get used to the process by the time you're in the actual industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Practice definitely makes perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's especially true for this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that pretty much brings me to the end of my questions for you. But thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. That, But it was so great getting to talk to you um, and just hear all of your advice. You know, practice makes perfect, everybody. <laughs> um, do it, do yeah, it, do it, even fun. if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, it was so great getting to talk to you. So thank you so much for taking the time. Um, and yeah, let me, I'm gonna. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. <laughs>